ਵਿੱਚ ਪਰ ਪੈਸਾ ਨਾਲ ਮਸ਼ੀਨਾ ਸੋਚਾਂ ਦੇ ਵਿੱਚ ਤੜਕੇ ਸੀਨਾ ਵਿੱਚ ਪਰ ਪੈਸਾ ਨਾਲ ਮਸ਼ੀਨਾ ਸੋਚਾਂ ਦੇ ਵਿੱਚ ਤੜਕੇ ਸੀਨਾ ਵਿੱਚ ਪਰ ਪੈਸਾ ਨਾਲ ਮਸ਼ੀਨਾ ਸੋਚਾਂ ਦੇ ਵਿੱਚ ਤੜਕੇ ਸੀਨਾ ਬਚਪਨ ਵਾਲੇ ਬੀਤੇ ਉਹ ਦਿਨ ਬਚਪਨ ਵਾਲੇ ਬੀਤੇ ਉਹ ਦਿਨ ਕਿੱਦਾਂ ਮੋੜ ਲਿਆ ਵਾ get to that uh, why the immigrants were allowed from any country in the world really was the need to have more workers because after the second world war uh, this country didn't have that many young people and uh, the country was progressing the factories were opening and there was a need also it was not charitable it was a need most of them in the beginning till i should say 1963 were from the rural areas of the Punjab naturally these were not rich peasants but just before or immediately after the commonwealth immigration control act of 1962 then some people who were educated people from the towns and cities as well as the retired soldiers I mean, they started coming in I came to airport actually they took me to the Victoria station and uh, I had only 5 pound currency and uh, when I showed two addresses to the driver and he said uh, sorry let us talk to the taxi driver we went to the taxi driver he said sonny sorry you can't go to uh, Glasgow uh, it's not enough but I can take you to the south hall being a poet myself being a writer myself uh the affiliation i had with england was with shakespeare uh, with wordsworth with shelley and all these writers and everything you know uh, daffodils skylark but when i came here i couldn't i couldn't see any skylark here first of all the single males came here after 4 5 years they started thinking to bring their families here so my meeting with my, my father was when I was coming down an escalator at Heathrow Airport and my mother said pointing out to a gentleman that man over there is your father and that's when I first met him some of the people who had come in 1951 52 53 they had already bought houses in south hall so we were lucky we were able to get some accommodation and because as we were single people so sometimes means for about two we- first two weeks i shared a bed with a friend of mine means he he used to work in the night shift i used to go for for day shift mukana di mushkilat bahut si te us vele ta e vi si kabe kai kai gharan de vich 10 15 15 bande apne rehnde si lekin aapas vich hi unna da prem bhavna badi si itho tak si pe jehda nawa banda aunda si ਕਿੰਨਾ ਚੱਕਰੋ ਕੰਮ ਤੇ ਨਾ ਲੱਗ ਜਾਵੇ ਤੇ ਉਹਦੇ ਰਾਸ਼ਨ ਪਾਣੀ ਦਾ ਤਾਂ ਉਹਦੀ ਰਹਿਸ਼ ਹੈ ਉਹਨੂੰ ਫਰੀ ਦਿੱਤੀ ਜਾਂਦੀ ਸੀਗੀ ਤੇ ਜਿੱਦਣ ਕੰਮ ਤੇ ਲੱਗ ਜਾਣਾ ਫੇ ਕਹਣਾ ਭਾਈ ਹੁਣ ਤੂੰ ਆਪਣਾ ਵੀ ਸ਼ੇਅਰ ਪਾ ਨਾ ਕਰਾਇਆ ਦੇ ਨਾ ਰਾਸ਼ਨ ਦਾ ਆਪਣਾ ਖਰਚਾ ਦੇ ਤੇ ਸਾਡੇ ਲੋਕਾਂ ਨੇ ਆਪਸ ਵਿੱਚ ਹੀ ਇੱਕ ਦੂਸਰੇ ਦੀ ਬਹੁਤ ਮਦਦ ਕਰਕੇ ਇੱਥੇ ਸੈਟਲ ਹੋਣ ਲਈ ਜਾਂ ਸਰਵਾਈਵ ਹੋਣ ਲਈ ਬੜਾ ਇੱਕ ਦੂਜੇ ਦਾ ਸਾਥ ਦਿੱਤਾ ਮੈਂ ਫਾਦਰ ਵਾਸ ਅ ਸੋਸ਼ਲ ਵਰਕਰ ਐਂਡ ਹੀ ਗੋ ਟੂ ਫੋਰ ਡਰਿੰਕ ਲਾਈਕ ਏਅਰਪੋਰਟ if you seen anybody got no way to go he bring home two year i couldn't sleep on a bed the reason was because he bring somebody in and he have to sleep on a bed we have a mattress under the bed we pull the mattress on night and sleep on that one they had up to 18 people living in one house um, because they were helping each other and the bed was always warm nine people were in the morning shift nine people with night shift um, and when one person was dedicated to cook for that a week um so they live as a communal okay like, uh, if you are uh, uh, going on the housing register or you wanted to be on the housing register uh, you have to be living in the borough for certain period of time which i if i vaguely remember it was about 7 years so it was in a way of keeping 
the new arrivals away from the housing uh, register and that's why the overcrowding in the Indian houses or the Asian houses were uh, due to that. The other thing, uh, the people who were already living here, most of them were not very highly educated, but they used to tell us the manners you got to keep, the etiquettes you got to keep. If you're boarding the bus, you got to stand in the queue, you got to let the ladies in first, and uh, you should be well dressed, you must not go out in pajamas. Even in the garden, uh, they were saying it is a bad manner, you know. Uh, my first memory is, of course, that I used to have long hair, uh, and I used to, uh, you know, it was a good Sikh boy with long hair. Uh, I came in on 19th of November, and the, I remember on 20th of November, my uh, father cut my hair off, uh, saying this would help me to integrate better. Semi-fascist organizations were formed here, like the South Hall Residents Association. It was not a South Hall Residents Association, it was the association of South Hall's white residents and even John Beans or others who were fascist and belonged to British National Party in those days, used to organize street meetings and public meetings against immigrants coming into the town. Racism, plenty of racism, because they're really south, well, the centre of Southall would be mostly Asian, so there was no problem there. But you could just go on the outskirts of it and you would be abused. I mean, some of our people experienced even violence. So naturally, you, you sometimes avoided those places where, where you didn't know what sort of reception you were going to get. We used to have uh, these pubs in South Hall. Some are still here, I wouldn't name them. Uh, they will not serve you the beer. Sometimes they'll say, just get out, because at that time there was no uh, anti-discrimination law. But uh, the others will let you in but you got to wait for your turn after he served the local people, even though they have come after me. This, it was that kind of situation. That was a shock to me. The whole environmental situation in this country was different from where they came from, you know, from the villages as peasants, self-supporting communities, and now had to work as workers in the industries. Working conditions, you know, the thing is that uh, we, we came into a situation uh, where the factories had become very old and the machinery was old, the working methods were old, uh, in many cases crude, and um, so working conditions were that much tough and hard. That's why actually we were called here, it means, it means the immigration happened because of the bad working conditions, bad factories, and we were able to give them life for another 20, 25 years. Everybody came to England, came to South Hall. He got a job in a bakery and a Western Bakery and R. Wolf. These are the two factories. After that, uh, there was a Coca Cola factory, Lions, and steel, and foundries, and the people start establishing and then they got a job outside. We used to go with tie and suit to find work in the factories. So naturally when they saw our face, they'll say no job. <laughs> so I roamed the streets of Hayes, South Hall, Hanselow for about first 10 days. Work 10 days means about two weeks. Couldn't find any job, but then my friend had some connection with the local rubber factory. And um, he got me a job there. At that time, difficult for Sikh to get a job because they don't give a job with the turban people. Even believe me, in my house, if anybody comes sick from India, I have to cut their hair because the barber don't cut a long hair. You have to make it short before you go to the barber, you know, so to get a job. And I discovered I was part of a, a three an elite group of three white English forklift drivers on the princely sum of 90 pence an hour, whereas all the other workers there were Asians on, on this 80 pence an hour. And that was pretty common, that sort of thing. So the sort of discrimination was fairly institutional in those days and nobody batted an eyelid at it. So it's not surprising that in due course 
uh, the time came when they wanted to stand up for themselves. <laughs> Indian Workers Association in this country were first formed in the late 30s, but the South Hall branch was formed in 1957. Major role was the IWA. We were four or five people. 57, uh, Ajit Siddhu da kar si. Te othe Ajit Siddhu mein e rupra te desh vande e kada hor si. Asi kya pe sanu mazdoor so bana li chali. Fir asi parti shuru ki thi. Pehli election 100 member baniya. Do shilik da member दो दो दिन लग दे थी कन्विंस करनु सारे बंदे आदि बैकग्राउंड ए जैसे बंदी थी है नहीं थी तो मेंबर नहीं थी बंदे दो श्रीगंगा दा मेंबर बनने के दो तीन दिन और उनको कन्विंस करना तां जा के बनना कुछ बंदे आन 1956 जेनिंग ते ओसले आईडब्ल्यूएन मेजर रोल कीता लोग का नहीं हेल्प लाई हर एक फील्ड दे बच्चे जॉब बाहुन डिस्क्रिमिनेशन हो गए होर भी बहुत सारे काम जिधा कहलो वर्जिन्टी टेस्ट होया वो देख खिलाफ उन्हें बंद कराया फिर इनकम टैक्स आपने बंद यान कई चूठे क्लेम की थे सी, उन्हानु फाइन जा जेल कर दे सी, वो टैक्स आला ना राल के उन्हाँ दे फैसले कराए। The IWA was a close community's own organization. It was like a family. There were no temples at all. No other community organization or group existed. It was Indian Workers Association only, which actually looked after the interest of the colored people. When I joined IWA, IWA sort of progressed in a, in, a, in a way that we could give initial help, like it was Citizens Advisory, Advisory Bureau, it was um, any, any problems with the, with the education of the children, any problems with the, with the calling of dependents, all these things. Indian Workers Association used to have uh, two permanent uh, employees. Um, the designation was welfare officer and lady welfare officer. Where dad, uh, men used to come and talk to him, women used to come and talk to my mum. I can remember being tiny going with her to various factories where she was, she was always, as I mentioned, she was educated, so she would complete the forms and get women's jobs. And I remember her, um, t beginning to teach a, an English class in Featherston where um, Featherston Road where IWA was first based. <laughs> हिंदुस्तानी मजदूरों में इस देश की ट्रेड यूनियन तहरीक में मदगम होने या ट्रेड यूनियन के उसमें शामिल होने की सोच अभी तक उनके ज़हन में दाखल नहीं हुई थी और और मैं मैं समझता हूँ कि हमारे सामने जो बहुत बड़ा मतलब था जिसको हम किसी हद तक हासिल करने में कामयाब हुए हैं और आज आज के हालात ये हैं कि तकरीबन कोई ही फैक्ट्री ऐसी होगी जिसमें ट्रेड यूनियन मुख्तलि किस्म की जो ट्रेड यूनियन इस देश में हैं हमारे मजदूर उसके मेंबर ना हो एवरीबॉडी फेस्ड रेसिज्म अर्ली डेज यू वर नॉट कंसीडर्ड फॉर पोजीशंस यू वर नॉट कंसीडर्ड फॉर गुड जॉब अपॉर्चुनिटीज फर्स्ट डिस्क्रिमिनेशन केस वन इन अंडरग्राउंड somebody was uh, working with underground because he, he, he been sacked because he wearing turban and uh, he fight and iw help him to win the case he won the case and he is uh, he come in uh, you know national news then we used to encourage people 
to join respective trade union wherever they are working yeah. and we used to liaise with the trade union side so that the people get integrated into that and secondly resolve their problems within the uh, factories where they are working we will call some uh, trade union officer to uh, lecture a small group of indian workers to tell them what the rights are what the unions do and all that kind of thing, so that the people become thoroughly aware why it is essential to become a member of a particular trade union the indian workers association forced the trade union movement to respond to their needs by entering as shop stewards when you join the union two things happen a your own rights are protected b you meet other people you meet other communities you know uh, uh, and uh, you, it is easier for you to talk to them the first company who started recruiting punjabis was our wolf rubber factory when i came in 1957 there were about 800 Indian Punjabis work was very heavy on night shifts and uh, very smelly sort of you know the burning rubber and all that very smelly sort of job so because of the appalling working conditions inside the factory and very low wages people thought that we must form a union but uh, the management naturally resisted they put a very strict condition not uh, raising uh, wages and all the you know they like getting a work like a, a slave and uh, people thought you know no not now few year ago yes you can do that one but not now we know what is happening here uh, and they played a major part indian workers association and sri guru singh sabha and other individuals who have contributed by, by helping those people who were on strike on the picket line uh, so that their families or they don't starve and they will be looked after everybody supported it and landlords they didn't uh, charge them the rent the shopkeepers they they gave credit to the uh, those people who couldn't afford uh, uh, the grocery bills and all that our father had already told people that you don't need to worry if you don't get paid I'll look after you food wise and done that for must be under 200 people over that and for 6 weeks just gave them food supplies and left it at that and when you see it even to this day I still see people and they say elderly people we remember Pritam Singh Sangha pai they used to call him pai how he gave us food and looked after us and any time we offered to pay him he said no ਮੁਰਦੇ ਘਰਾਂ ਨੂੰ ਪੰਛੀ ਵੇਖਾਂ ਹੋ ਜਦੋਂ ਸ਼ਾਮ ਜਹੀ ਪੈਂਦੀ ਲੋਕ ਨਹੀਂ ਰਹਿੰਦੇ ਹੋਏ ਗਏ ਕੀ ਬਾਤ ਵਾਟ ਇੰਡੀਆ ਯੂਜ਼ ਟੂ ਬੀ ਫੁੱਲ ਆਫ ਐਕਸਾਈਟਮੈਂਟ ਐਂਡ ਕੈਨ ਯੂ ਜਸਟ ਇਮੇਜਿਨ ਵੀ ਯੂਜ਼ ਟੂ ਹੈਵ ਪੋਲਿੰਗ ਸਟੇਸ਼ਨਸ ਪੋਲਿੰਗ ਸੋ ਮੈਨੀ ਪੋਲਿੰਗ ਸਟੇਸ਼ਨ ਇਨ ਸਾਊਥ ਹਾਲ ਹੰਸਲੋ 17000 membership uh, that's a record that's a record it involved the association had mem- membership and members going to polls to elect an executive committee of 21 members and there were about five groups standing we had a, a meter long <laughs> uh, ballot paper P- there are so many kind of people that every vote has got a different symbol lion tank hand whatever good uh, machine i don't know but this group actually brought a tank on a lorry on the and this they paraded this their symbol which was a tank along the broadway it was incredible thousands of people came in on coaches it was like a national election oh there was a, like a like a india election indian uh, you know indian parliament election because they fighting like anything and they make a cartoon of each other in a paper believe me that i think you might have some cartoon that was a very very funny card, you know and there was a two group especially you know stand in election they fight like anything you know you can and holding a, a public meeting and go door to door 
one group come, then other other party group come, they go door to door, you know, campaign in the election. It was like a carnival. Everybody was involved to some degree, picking up members, you know, people used to kind of vote. They had to be kind of, they were almost accosted at, in front of the kind of ballot kind of place, you know, people being forced, you know, people trying to almost tell you, you know, you're from our village, uh, don't be a disgrace. That was one kind of tactic, right? Uh, all sorts of collecting you, even though the other faction has recruited you. The uh, uh, in a, another faction would collect you from home and take you to the ballot paper, hoping that you'd vote for them. So there was all these kind of things happening. I think, considering uh, the amount of people that voted, uh, they were well organised. Uh, I, I think the passion with which Indians um, share their feelings. Oh, were well, very much part of it. There were fights, there were shouting, but the elections themselves, yeah, I think they were well organised. There were queues of people waiting to vote. Always did horse trading. You, if you give me five seats, I, 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 I give you another one. Um, you gave us ten seat. Um, we, you have eleven. This, that, you give me the general secretaryship. I give you five more this side and all that. It was under Vishnu Das Sharma and Rupra uh, they bought Dominion and that was bought one that it would see as an independent organization with their own assets so that people living in South Hall could uh, feel that this is ours. असी डिविनियन लिया सी उदों नब्बे हज़ार पाउंड लोगों की डोनेशन तो उन्होंने सारा ही सू सेंटर चाहता सी पोलिटिकल प्लेटफॉर्म लाई कल्चर तो समाजिक सू जगह चाहिए सी कोई और डिविनियन सेंटर लैंड ना सा मकसद भी पूरा हो गया इस प्लेटफॉर्म तो सारे इतने के लीडर मोस्ट प्रोमनेंट इंडिया के लीडर इंडिया की प्राइम मिनिस्टर इंदिरा गांधी वह भी इस प्लेटफॉर्म तो बोल के गई है वन डोमीनियन सिनेमा वॉज बॉट पीपल कॉन्ट्रीब्यूट गॉट ए लॉट ऑफ मनी वॉलंटरली एज वेल अबाउट फिफ्टी परसेंट डिपोजिट वॉज रेजड बाय द कम्यूनिटी दैम सेल्स सम ऑन लोन फ्रॉम मैंबरस एंड सम डोनेशन In those days, the average wage was about twelve pounds, thirteen pounds, and uh, many people donated hundred pounds each. We used to run Indian movies. That was something which uh, uh, provided them uh, entertainment, and secondly, a place to meet with each other. I remember going there with my friend. This auditorium, eighteen hundred seats. Totally packed, and you know, seeing uh, a film, and me and my friend, we were very young. We sat on one seat, and I kind of remember, you know, going to see films like Jungli, and everybody singing in the cinema. The cinema wasn't just a building; it, it brought the entire community together. Independence Day celebrations, Bhangra competitions. It was, um, it was the heartbeat of our community. It, it had a boxing ring, but the Indian Workers Association used to use that to hold wrestling competitions. And I remember vividly, Dara Singh, our national hero, came to kind of uh, Dominion Centre. Oh my God. Everybody. Uh, what well, it was packed. I think the big thing for people were the Indian film stars that came. Uh, very much part of that was um, Sagun Thakur's next door. So you'd pick up your samosas or go to the cinema or you'd go there afterwards. And uh, great joy. That building had great joy in it. It was giving good income. Out of that income, we were very able to run the offices. 
Uh, yes, when Indira Gandhi came in 1976. I want to actually, <laughs> it's a funny thing as also. Uh, Bishnath Sharma, uh, he announced, it was leaflet, that Indira Gandhi will come at 7.15 p.m. I may be wrong on the time, 7.50 p.m. And she will sit until 7.30 p.m. She will get up to speak at 7.45 p.m. And she will finish her speech about 8 o'clock. Please come at 7 o'clock or before sharp. And the people, as our habits are, you know, Indian Standard Time, they were coming at 8.30, 9 o'clock. See, where Indra Gandhi has gone? <laughs> and they were all blaming Vishnath Sharma. Why did, he st why did he start the program at the, at the exact time? <laughs> With kind of immigration, uh, uh, IWA were activists were the only people who would go to Heathrow Airport, talk to entry clearance officers, immigration officers, to try to get people who were detained at the airport and not given permission to come into the country. So the immigration authorities started uh, harassing people if they were coming with, if their dependents were coming and all that. So that was the service we provided to 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 liaise to to go to the airport and then interview the applicants and and tell the immigration officers that means the genuineness of the of the relationships and all that. I had to work even up to twelve o'clock in the night because the immigration officers were in the habit of keeping us waiting, <laughs> so that next time we don't dare to go there. <laughs> but that was uh, that was. That was there. It didn't didn't deter us. I think Vishnu was the person who came to JCWI, um, and uh, told the organisation that he had encountered someone who had been subjected to a virginity test uh, by the immigration authorities at Heathrow. Virginity test was one of uh, those factors, just to create problems. Oh, you are not a virgin, therefore how come you are getting to get married? As if this is a qualification for getting married. At that stage, female fiancés were the only family members who didn't have to get entry clearance in advance. So looking back at the sort of suspicious way that immigration officers looked at families, particularly from the Indian subcontinent and the Caribbean, they said, well, we don't believe that this woman can possibly be a fiancé. We don't think she is. We think she's really a wife trying to get round the entry clearance requirements. Therefore, we subject her to a medical examination, which, of course, cannot actually prove whether someone is a virgin or not. It is not in the uh, 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 rules or uh, law that a generative test has to be done. But it was carried on. There was some instruction from the Home Office to the immigration people. That was again the Indian Workers Association, JCWI coming together. It was the practice at the Heathrow Airport uh, by the immigration officers. Uh, it was challenged in the parliament uh, and then it was removed. IWA has a lot to um, be proud of in terms of campaigning for justice for people who have been affected by Britain's immigration system because of course that incident led to a major inquiry into racism in the immigration service. The parents of white children, they felt very restless and threatened uh, with the growing number of uh, Asian children in the schools. And the uh, education minister came to South Hall and he said, he asked about the opinions of the parents. Uh, naturally, Asian parents, they never spoke up, but the English parents, they said, oh, we don't want uh, these children in our schools at all. So the education minister said, I can't open separate schools for these children. Um, but if you say so, I will send black child in every school where there's no black child. They didn't want to increase the number more than 33% in a school. So 
then the education authorities decided uh, let's bus the children outside South Hall, but only uh, Asian children were bused, nobody else. They were going, being bused out to the borders, Norfolk, Greenford, areas that we wouldn't even go to. But they were putting them, like herding them onto coaches, taking them, busing them there, and then picking them up and bringing them back. I, I used to drive the Fox of Age coach to take the kid to the school up to Acton. I always against. So many times we find out a kid asleep on the back seat. I always say that is wrong. Every kid lost one or two hour sleep every morning. Dispersal became more serious by 1969-70. And uh, that, that, that was the time that IWA and uh, even that time I was working with the Ealing Community Relations Council. We put our foot down that we don't need any dispersal. We need local schools, local places and local schools. Even my children also went in buses and we fight against it through the IWA. We make a lot of demonstrations. And uh, IWA fight for it and they won it. And uh, then they started giving school in South or after. So I have very close association with uh, Sardul Gale and uh, remembering those days, the popularity he had, the people, Indian people particularly, felt so proud that one of their own has got elected to Ealing Council and he was very popular within the Labour Party and within the community. Uh, it was a big achievement. Piara Singh Khabra was the first elected Asian Labour Party MP. Both presidents of the Indian Workers Association, both rooted in the community. <laughs> And there were a lot of street fights with the National Front. And when they announced that they were coming to Southall, because it was the elections in May 79, they were standing in the elections and they wanted to have a public meeting in Southall Town Hall, an area where they had no support. Quite clearly as a publicity stunt and as a racist provocation, we were not saying that they cannot hold a meeting. We, the Indian Workers Association was not saying that they, they cannot, they, they should not stand as a candidate. Let them stand, let them say whatever they want to say. But the Indian Workers Association was concerned that council should not allow them to hold meeting where there is a majority of Indian people are there. There was a march to Ealing Town Hall asking the council not to give them Southall Town Hall, which was ignored. And eventually it was decided to have a huge demonstration. We just uh, wanted to make a uh, demonstration peacefully against the racist body as a protest. Because if they had right to hold a meeting, we have also right, we have also right to hold a demonstration against uh, such a fascist body. Uh, yes, I think there was such a build-up and um, I can remember the day itself where all the businesses were boarding up the fronts of the shops. Women, children, men, men older people, everybody was on the streets. I mean, Southall came to a standstill. You could not get onto the Broadway. There were women sitting on the floor, there were kids. Was, I've never seen so many people. It felt like the authorities were working against us, um, absolute disbelief and, and I remember the footage on the news uh, of them coming into the town hall and waving, you know, like we're here and we did it and you couldn't stop this. Um, absolutely I remember that day. And then the um, horses later on and the confusion and uh, people being hurt. Uh, uh, and then all night, my father at the police station trying to get people out that had been arrested and negotiating. And um, I remember him coming home in the morning, 
absolutely shattered. The Southall Youth Movement uh, was created, but it's unfortunate that we did not let the youth leadership to emerge as a leading force, working in partnership with the Indian Workers Association and the senior leadership at that time, where it was seen as a threat. The Indian Workers Association uh, was unable to relate at that moment in time to the response of effectively their own children. So the IWA had a major shock, major awakening. It began to understand that it was no longer representative of the whole community. It could no longer speak like it had done for perhaps three decades for the whole community. Their historical role had been to mediate. We, be, we felt that they were almost appeasing the state uh, institutions, the police, the race relations industry, the home office, etc., etc., local authorities included. So as an institution, the Indian Workers Association had no conduits, no bridges in terms of coming to that uh, community of second generation, of new Asians, many of who call themselves British, whatever. <laughs> Sale. I remember. I remember how sad it was that although it had been the main focus of the community, and so many wonderful things had happened with the videos coming in, people no longer watched um, films, and so the building was becoming dilapidated, and the cinema wasn't being used. Although part of it was still being used as the IWA office, um, there was an agreement that. Uh, came to about uh, the cinema that we would, the IWA would still have a um, part of it uh, at a peppercorn rent, but forever. So considering the state that the building was in, I think uh, that that was a really good deal. And to this day, the IWA is still based there. One beauty of the Indian Workers Association, South Hall, is that people from the different faiths, different regions, and the different political persuasions came together, never fought on the grounds of their political lines. Congress and the communists worked together with their own understanding how they want to see the Indian Workers Association uh, developed. I mean, Indian Workers Association has a very major role for the development of the Indian community in this area. Uh, but it's uh, also uh, encouraged many people to participate uh, in other uh, walks of life. Uh, people were supported uh, and people were brought together and the unity was created. More Indian community became more settled, more economically independent, more able to take care of individually even of their own situation under the rule of law, the ideology started becoming, uh, going, going downhill. And um, although I'm not saying that we, we don't need ideology, we still need it. But at the same time, it depends on the people who are actively involved in, in Indian Workers Association to see that it starts relating to changing conditions. Some conversations with people say, oh, well, IWA doesn't do anything. Hundreds of people go through that door still, to this day, seeking advice and support. Because a lot of us have moved on uh, socially or economically, there's still a huge number of people who are living in appalling conditions, uh, being treated very badly at work, uh, are here illegally, many other reasons. So the organisation still has a place. <laughs> 
एक आहाब को प्लेन पर इस मुल्क ने चालान जैसे बनने दे दिए। उस वेले दुनिया के बीचे कोई ऐसा इंस्टीट्यूशन नहीं थी सारी दुनिया के बीचे जिधर सेक्युलर हो गए और सारी दुनिया गुरुद्वारे में तो दूर होने के स्कूल भी होने के पर ये हो क्या सेक्युलर अदारा सारी दुनिया के तख्त नहीं थी।